Hello and welcome to our Wage a Battle with Google Sheets. We're very excited to have you join us. I'm Isabella. Uh, we have Katie joining here. We're very excited to show you all the amazing things that you can play with Google Sheets. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to have you here today. And we are going to be waging a sea battle with Google Sheets. So we're going to have so much fun today. So we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and jump in. My name is Katie Eklund. I am a technology project facilitator. Uh, I live in Southern California down in the United States, and I am just excited to share all of this fun in Google Sheets with you guys today. I'm gonna let Isabella introduce herself. Thanks, Katie. I am Isabella. I am a science teacher as well as the EdTech Integration Program Coordinator here in Toronto, Ontario. We are very sunny right now, so I'm excited to have you join us. Awesome. And then we also have two amazing people from our Google Canada team joining us. Let's go ahead and have Seth introduce yourself first. Hi, everybody. My name's Seth. I work at Google working on very large code bases and getting them built fast and efficiently. Um, and yeah, I'll turn it over to Elmi. Hi, everybody. I'm Elmi. I work in Google Waterloo and I work on smaller things than SAS on code for small devices. And I'm very happy to be here. Thank you both so much for joining us. We're so excited to have you with us and it's going to be a fun session together. Just a reminder for all of those of you who are watching with us, we are on YouTube Live. So you can pause, you can go back, you can replay it. We are here to move at the pace that works best for you. So just remember that as you are watching this with us today. So thank you again so much for joining us. So to get us off started, we wanna hear from you. We wanna connect. We um, are going to be waging that sea battle in Google Sheets. So I'm just curious if any of you out there have ever played Battleship before. So to join us, you're gonna go and you're gonna see this link right here on the screen, the cc.page forward slash steam 3d all lowercase type that in and it's going to take you to a google sheet where you're going to give us your first name and then answer this question right here on our sheet and we want to hear from you we are going to be kind of checking in throughout this session so make sure that you're finding that form leaving it open in another tab and kind of sharing with us along the way and we know that it takes a minute to get there so as we're waiting for you guys to share with us and get your responses in we are going to just kind of dive in to see where we get to these resources before we dive into the fun of the session. And Katie, um, I'm just looking yes. at the responses right now. I'm very Already? excited because there's so many people that said that they have played Mr. Moore's class. There, yes, we have. Sean says that he has as well. And Ms. Clemp's <gasps> class, they just played Yay. Battleship last week. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, amazing. Yeah. oh, I love it. I'm so excited. So we have lots of battleship experts in here. I absolutely love it. That's going to make this session even better. So thank you all so much for kind of sharing that with us and just jumping in that form. I love it. Awesome. I know I love battleship. I used to play it all the time. So I'm super excited to play this with you guys today. So before we dive into the actual creation, mainly this is just a like a one minute exploration of where these resources are for all of the teachers who are joining us uh, with digital, um, with the applied digital skills from Google. This is where I found this resource. All right. I have a shortened URL there for you, but if you go to apply digital skills and type in a wage a sea battle, you will find this and you'll be able to see that it is already all built there for you, gives you the activities, gives you under your teaching materials, lesson plans, certificates of completion, all of those good items. So for the teachers joining us, make sure you check that out after we're done here today. But really what I'm gonna focus on today is walking you through all of those steps and all of those how to's together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna dive right in and I am not going to be clicking through this slide deck the whole time. I'm gonna go and do a live demonstration inside of Google Sheets. So I would love for you guys to do that right alongside of me. And I'm gonna be walking you through those steps, giving you some moments here and there to try the skill, practice the skill and ask us any questions. And remember that Google Sheet that you had open already and joined us with, you are going to ask us any questions, share anything 
along the way right inside of that Google Sheet with us. And don't worry, we'll be putting that link back up again. We'll be asking some questions along the way. So if you accidentally close that tab, it will be coming back. So don't worry about that either. So the first thing we're going to do is we have to go set up and define our ocean on a Google Sheet. So what I have done here is I have opened up a brand new Google Sheet. I just went simply to my drive and I clicked create and I clicked Google Sheet. You can also do this in Excel. For those of you who are joining us who maybe don't have access to Google Sheets, but have access to Excel, you can go ahead and open that up and um, you can do that alongside of us if you would like to as well. So the first thing I'm going to do inside of my Google Sheet is I'm going to define my ocean. I'm gonna make my ocean just very simple, a 10 by 10. So I'm gonna go down 10 rows by, I have my first cell selected and then I'm gonna use my keyboard and hold down my shift key to go down 10 rows and then I'm going to go over 10 columns. Okay, so I have my 10 by 10 selected. And I know that maybe looks a little weird because they're not even. So what we're going to do is we're going to resize them. So if I come over to my rows right here and right click, don't do what I just did. You see how when I right clicked it, it unselected that. So make sure, lesson learned, make sure that you don't unclick them. So let's go back over here and I'm going to right click in this first cell right here, okay? And we are going to hopefully be able to resize them. One quick moment, let's try this again. We're going to resize and I am just going to go to 50. And then I am going to select and we're going to resize. 250 because again we want to make them squares okay so let me grab my rows one more time see boys and girls even i make mistakes and it's okay if you're having to do this just a couple of times like i am that's okay too now look here we go we have our 10 by 10 right here so we can see look our 10 by 10 those are all the same size now so that is going to be our ocean. So now what we're going to do once we've resized, and so remember, you're gonna select, you're going to right click to resize, okay? So now you wanna make sure that you have all of your columns and rows selected. And now we're going to turn it blue like the ocean. So I'm gonna come up here to our fill color and I'm gonna pick any shade of blue that I like. And I'm gonna pick this nice, beautiful blue option to shade it. But now look what happened when I shade it. It's kind of hard to see my different cells here, right? So again, I'm going to select all of my shells, cells that I just turned blue. And I'm gonna come up here right next to my fill color. There's this beautiful thing called borders. I'm going to select that I want all of my cells to have individual borders. I could even make it a little bit thicker of a line if I wanted to really be able to see them, which I do highly suggest when you are making Battleship or a, your C Battle in Google Sheets. So now if I click away, you're gonna see, look right here, I have my 10 by 10 and I can see all of the cells because they're outlined in black, okay? And they're all the same size, all ready to go. So those are our first couple of steps, but one more important step before we kind of take a pause and let you get going. So I am going to go to my first cell up here and select it and I'm going to type in the letter X right here. I'm now going to highlight that letter oh, X. Katie, yes. I was just yes. wondering, oh, before uh -huh. we dive straight into the X, um, uh -huh. I was wondering if you could just sort of show us again how you managed to resize both the columns as well as the rows. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, the simplest thing to do is to select your rows that you want to resize. You're gonna right click and you're gonna click resize and then you're gonna type in the size you want it to be. So in this case, I'm recommending 50 pixels for the rows and then you click okay. And then you're gonna repeat the same steps for your columns by selecting your columns, then right clicking 
clicking resize columns. And then again, because we want them to be squares, we're gonna put in a 50, just like you see right here. And then we're gonna click okay. And then it resized them all to be squares together. Great question. And then don't forget, once you have them all selected, you will have to also change your color to blue with your fill color, any blue you want, or really you could make your C any color you would like. And then right next to it, you wanna add some borders by having all of your cells have border lines, which is this first option. And then I also like to make it a little bit thicker of a line to make sure that we can really see the differences between each cell. All right, so everybody good so far? Let us know again and uh, our wonderful helpers will kind of keep popping in and asking me questions or asking me to reshow if needed. So thank you so much, Isabella. Yeah, All right. So, oh, there's a couple of uh, questions yeah. just because I think everybody's on different devices. So mm -hmm. for those who are on a trackpad, your right click would probably be like a two finger tap so that you can get that extra menu. And remember when Katie highlighted those rows or columns, she was right clicking it in the column section or in the row section. So not in your ocean space, but rather on the column letters or in the row numbers there. And then also, um, I don't know if it's possible for you to zoom in. There is a little paint bucket that is in uh, your menu there. That is how you're gonna be able to color your cells right there. Yeah, so notice how where Katie is highlighting there. When you highlight that icon, it says fill color, and that's where you can color your ocean right there. Thank you. Yes, and then remember, right next to it, that's that border option for you. So Connor is asking which program you're supposed to use, and you can either use Google Sheets or Excel. you can use Excel. Absolutely. Thank you. And specifically, if you're in a web browser, you can type sheets.google.com. That will get you there. If you're in Windows, you can hit the window key and just start typing Excel, and it should pull it up if it's on your computer. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so very much. Great. Any other questions? We doing oh, good we, so far? Yeah, and we have a fantastic question that's coming from Ron. How do you make the lines between the blue blocks? How do you highlight Absolutely. All Yep, so the first thing you're gonna do is select all of them. I like to hold down my shift key and then highlight all of the cells that I want to select. And then I come right next to that paint bucket and where it says borders, when you hover over it, and then I select the first option right here and it will put in those borders around it. And then if you wanna make them thicker, like you see on the screen right here, you're going to select where you see these lines and choose a nice, thick line and it will make that um, a nice dark border for you. Great questions. Any other questions? All right. It seems like there are a lot of people still asking for resize options. So to see the resize option, you need to select only rows or only columns because mm -hmm. it will not show up if you select a range. There you go, awesome. Great, great questions, everybody. And don't forget, um, we, you know, we can go over this, we can answer questions, but all of the resources for this are also right inside of that digital applied skills. And they have videos that walk you through all of this as well. So lots of resources that you can always check out after today. So I'm just gonna kind of keep on moving forward a little bit, and we're gonna move into some formatting that we need to do for when we play our game. So in my first cell right here, I'm going to go ahead and type in the letter X, and then I'm going to highlight this letter because I want to format it because it's kind of small right there, right? So I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it nice and big, take the font size up to 36. And then I also, I'm going to change my text color up here in my toolbar where that A is, and I'm going to turn it red. So now I can see that I have a big red X in here. And anytime, uh, myself or anyone who's playing my game types into a square, I want it to be the same red X everywhere. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to select this formatting and come up here to my paint format option. It looks like a, a roller paint brush and I'm gonna select that. And then I'm going to select the cells that I want to have the same format. So I'm just gonna go right here and I want it to be all of my cells. So I'm dragging all the way down 
And then it should hopefully, if I did it correctly, be anytime we type in here. So see how this one didn't pick up, but this one, so it's all right if this happens to you. Sometimes when you do your formatting, I'm gonna go ahead and use my friendly undo button. We're gonna try this one more time. Let's try it together. We're going to pick our paint format button. We're gonna click on that, okay? And then we should be able to hopefully drag this all the way down to format for us. And now let's test it over here to see. Look, there we go. It worked for us this time, okay? So again, I'm gonna walk you through that just one more time because I know that can be um, a little strange and a little bit hard to see. So we're gonna do it again. I'm going to select my cell that has the formatting I want, and I'm going to click my paintbrush right here, the paint format. And then I'm going to click and drag across all of the cells that I want it to apply that to. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna drag all the way down to this corner so it grabs all my cells and then let go. And you see how we kind of have that paste icon that appears. And then we're gonna test it by clicking and see how we can now see red X's wherever we go. So now we know that the formatting has stuck, okay? So I know that was a lot. So I'm gonna give you guys a moment. Let us know if you have any questions, but I really want to make sure that you guys have made your C and you've added your X formatting. Once you've done that, you're gonna go back and you're going to remove your X's because we obviously will want to play the game and we won't want the X's in there, but we do that so that we can have nice big red X's and know where all of the hits um, and things are across our board. So I'm gonna give you guys like, you know, a little bit of time to ask us any questions, to kind of try that out for yourself, all of that good stuff. And uh, let us know if you have any questions before we move into the next step, we'll be placing our ships, which is gonna be super fun. So I'm gonna give you guys just a little bit of time and let us know if you have any questions. So Katie, we have a couple of questions from Joel and Koshik, uh, wondering how you got the X. So, um, mm -hmm. so just to so, remind everybody that this is video, uh, so you, you're more than welcome to hit the pause and rewind and to revisit what Katie has just done. And this video will always be live. You will always have access to this. So don't feel like you have to uh, keep up with it because we understand that it is going really fast. So in terms of going, uh, typing in your X and formatting the X, how do we do that, Katie? So you're gonna go ahead and first start by typing in just an X into the first cell. Then I simply selected that X and I changed the size to a nice big font. I changed the color using the text color. And then what I did is I selected that cell, used my paint format option right here, selected that once, and then I'm going to now click on the cells I want to apply this formatting to. So I'm gonna click and then drag all the way to my bottom corner here so that it selects my cells. And then I can see that it's applied that right here and then I can test it along the way. Okay, so great job everybody. Just so we can get through everything, I'm gonna keep going forward, but just like Isabella just said, don't forget that if you need to, click the pause button right now, drag that back, do a little bit of rewinding and watch that again so you can practice that as needed. All and right, so uh, yes. Sorry, just. I wanted to interject one thing. Lexi had been asking if you could actually make the ocean a different color than blue. And the answer is yes. If you want an alien like green ocean, go for it. The, it'll work great. So absolutely, absolutely. You can do whatever color you would like. All right, so now we're gonna move into placing our ships and doing something that is called conditional formatting inside of Google Sheets. So I'm gonna dive back over and here, remember, is my ocean. So I'm gonna place my ships and in a traditional battleship game, you have some different style ships. You see that right here, I have five different ships. I have a six cell, a five cell, four, three, and two. Um, absolutely, you can have different ones as long as you set those parameters with whoever you are playing with, but we're gonna stick a little bit traditional today. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna select six cells either ver vertically or horizontally. And now that I have those cells selected, I'm going to come back up to this paint bucket. Remember this paint bucket up here? And I'm going to turn it gray to signify my ship. So I have my first ship 
right? And then I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna call this um, the shark and I'm going to say that it equals six cells, okay? Now I'm gonna go and place my next ship of five cells. So I'm gonna go ahead and go anywhere on here, vertically or horizontally and select five cells in a row. And then I'm gonna follow the same steps and I'm going to turn that gray. Pro tip, this you have to make sure that your boats do not touch, meaning share any border walls. So I could not have a boat start here because if you do that, then our conditional formatting won't work properly, okay? So make sure that your ships do not share any cell walls. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish selecting all of my ships so that it looks just like this and adding all of those down there. While you guys give that a try, I'm just gonna be demoing this a few more times on the screen, but feel free to go to your tab and start placing your five ships. I'm gonna, I placed my, my fifth one. And you can name your ships whatever you would like. I went with an animal theme, but you can name them anything that works best for you. Get creative, have fun with it. So I just and placed try my- not to put your ships in the same spot that they're showing you on the screen because your opponent will guess your ships quite easily if, the, if you do that. Yes, good point. Get creative, pick some new areas. Maybe instead of doing it vertically, do it horizontally, things like that. All right, I just placed my third one, or excuse me, my fourth ship. And remember over here, I am just putting in a little uh, key, which is helpful when you're playing the game with someone. So I highly recommend doing that. And then now I'm going to place my final ship right here. Oops. All right, so I have now placed all of my ships and I have created my nice little key over here. I do wanna point out, you notice that my key doesn't kind of fit in my um, column right here, they go beyond that. So if you wanted to make sure that they can refit, remember that resizing option we did. Well, this is a good time to practice that skill again. So if you come up to the top of the column, where you put in your key. So for me, that's letter M. And I'm gonna right click again and I'm gonna click resize column. But instead of putting in a number this time, look at this cool option I have right here. It's called fit to data. If I click that right there and then click the words okay, you're gonna see, look, boom, it now fits all of the data inside of that column. So one more time, I selected the column and right clicked on the column top, clicked resize and clicked fit to data and clicked okay. And then now it all matches. All right, so that is our kind of first stop is we have to place our ships and add our key. And remember, if you need to rewind at this time, at this moment and go back if you need help placing your ships. But I wanna make sure we get through everything before our session ends today. So I'm gonna move into our next step, which is conditional formatting. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to have some conditional formatting that is placed right here so that when we play the game and they hit one of our ships, it will do something. Because what conditional formatting does, it is it allows us to have specific cells within our sheet do specific things when you do something. So you remember when we put in um, the letter X, because that's how we're gonna mark where people are trying to hit our ships. Well, now we need to tell our sheet that when it hits on one of our ships here, it's gotta do something. So the first thing I have to do is I need to select all of the cells that my ships live in. So I selected this first one right here, and now I'm gonna hold down the control key if I'm on a uh, Windows computer, or the command key if I'm on a Mac computer, and I'm simply going to select all of my cells that I have shaded gray. So if you can kind of see, it's a little bit hard to see, they're, they're all being selected, okay? And you wanna make sure you select all of them before letting go of that uh, control or command key. 
So now that I've done that, I'm going to come up to format, okay? And I'm going to select conditional formatting. So remember, I selected just the gray cells or the ones that represent my ships. And now I'm going to format and conditional formatting. So you can see, look, here is all of my cells I have selected. So now I need to tell it what to do. So I'm going to say, if the cell contains the letter X, remember we put an X in our cell, I want it to turn bright red because to me that is in battleship red means like a big hit. But if you wanted to choose another color, that's fine too. But you wanna signify it as something completely different than the ocean. That's all I would really, really recommend. So once you have done that, you're gonna simply click the word done and now we're gonna go try it. So watch this. So I'm going to type an X in one of my gray squares and we're gonna see what happens. So X, look, it turns bright red. So that means it's like a hit on my ship. All right, so that is a way that you know that it works for each of your ships. So that is your conditional formatting. And again, rewind if you need to, but all that I did is I started by selecting all of my gray cells by clicking on the first one, holding down the control or the command key to select all of my cells. Once I did that, I went format, conditional formatting. And then when I did that, I did text contains the letter X and turns red. Okay. So go ahead and try that out. And let us know how you're doing. Also, um, just a fun question along the way, if you're kind of like right here with us, um, making sure you let us know that you've placed your ships. Um, let us know, do you think that you're kind of tricky with your placement? Do you think that whoever you play with is going to be able to find it quickly or not? We'd love to hear that in the chat from you. For those asking whether this will work on Chromebook, yes, it will. Absolutely. Great question. Thank you so much for asking that. Awesome. 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 I'm going to give you guys just another 30 seconds or more because next up is going to be doing that final prep of it and how to share your game to get playing. So, so excited. The, the real kind of most of the work is done. We just have a teeny little bit left. Any other questions or how are people doing? Have, have, Anyone shared with us that they placed their ships? Yeah, we have a very interesting placement. I wouldn't do your shout out there if you're gonna be playing with a partner, but this person buried all of them in the corner. So the game is gonna be very long or very short. I love that? it. <laughs> I love it. Great, great way to play it. Make sure though, don't forget, you cannot have your ships touching. You need to have a blue square in between them. So don't forget that part, everybody. All right, so let's just keep on moving forward. So we're gonna talk about now that we've made this, how do we go and play it? So I now have my game ready, but I can't share this sheet with all of my ships showing, right? So I've got to now change and make sure my ocean is blue and kind of disguise my ships. So what I'm going to do again, is I'm gonna select my first cell right up here, that A1, and then I'm going to I uh, used my shift key to select all of my rows and columns again, just like we did at the beginning, so that my whole 10 by 10 is selected. And I'm gonna come back up to my fill color, that paint bucket, and I'm gonna turn them all back blue again. And look, all of my ships just disappeared again. So you want to make sure that you turn them all blue. That doesn't mean that our conditional formatting went away. It is still there, it's going to work, I promise. This is just a way to disguise your ships so that when you play with someone, they don't see them. Only you know where they were. So that's the first thing, okay? Uh, and then the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to share your spreadsheet. If you haven't named your spreadsheet yet, if it still says untitled up here in the corner, you're gonna wanna click up there first and you're gonna wanna give it a title. You can call it sea battle, you can call it whatever works best for you, but before you can share it, you're going to have to give it a name. So that's a quick tip for you as well. Once that's done, then you're gonna click this share button, and then you're gonna simply type in who you're going to share this to. So I'm gonna share this over to my other account here, but here's the most important part. Before you click send, you need to change their sharing access to view only. So again, 
change this little drop down to view only because you only want to be able to allow them to see it. Otherwise, they'll be able to see your conditional formatting and know where your ships are. So you give them view only access. And then you're gonna click send and it will then share this sheet with them and they'll be able to see it with you and get ready to play. So you'll wanna make sure you share your sheet with them. And then because a battleship, you each normally have your own area, right? You'll wanna make sure that they share their sheet with you. So you will end up with two sheets open, yours and theirs. And their sheet will be view only and yours will be yours. So that kind of leads us into our next step. But before we do, just a quick reminder of what I just did. I selected all of our cells in the 10 by 10, and then I changed them all back to that blue C option. And then I made sure my sheet had a name. And then, then finally I went to my share button. I shared it with someone and gave them view only access. Remember, very important, only view only access. So now that we have disguised our ships and we've shared our spreadsheet, you're ready to play. So I'm just gonna do a quick demo of um, what this will look like. So just like in um, most traditional battleship or sea battle games, um, you're gonna call out cells. So if I'm playing with someone and they say E2, so I'm gonna go to E2 and I'm gonna put in an X and then I'm going to click and see what happens. If it doesn't turn red, then that means it was not a hit, right? And then maybe I would guess on theirs and they would do the same thing. And then you would continue to do it. So maybe A4 was just called and I mark it on here, right? And I can see that it just turned red. Okay, so when it turns red, what does that mean again? That means a hit, okay? So remember that. And then once they have hit all of your cells, right? All of it in the entire ship, right? I just remember I placed one here. So that's why we're going here. See, but look, they didn't, it wasn't all the way down here. So that is member part of the game. So once they've hit all six, right? They sunk my shark ship. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to just turn this red as a, yep, this is your reminder that you've sunk that ship. So now you're going to be looking for all of the rest of my ships. And you're going to go back and forth and you're going to play your game until there is a winner or everybody sinks all of each other's ships. So that is the way you're going to simply kind of just play it back and forth. It's super fun, super amazing. Um, and so while you guys are kind of finishing up those final steps, who are you going to share with us? Who are you going to play this with? Maybe a classmate, maybe a um, brother and sister, a family member. We'd love to hear who you're thinking of playing this with for your first round. Any questions? We have a few that was asking uh, whether their ships could be a different color or their ship names could be anything they want. And for sure, you can be as creative as you can. Katie just chose an ocean theme, but you can for free, like feel free to just do a different theme if you want. You can also choose a different color instead of gray, uh, whatever works best for you. But I would suggest ensuring that the conditional formatting is red. So then it's clear that your partner has hit, has sunk your ship. Absolutely, yes. You can have fun with the colors here. Make sure that they're very different colors so it's easy and they're not blending together. But absolutely, you guys pick your colors, have fun. But also make sure that whoever you're playing with knows those colors. So what they're seeing when they view your sheet so that they understand and know. So that's the key to it is you can choose different colors, but just make sure. So if you're gonna kind of do different colors, maybe add that to the bottom of your area right here as like a little key, like red means this, blue means this, or whatever color you're doing. That's just a little tip for you. So awesome, awesome work, everybody. I can't wait to hear how everybody's first one goes. But before we kind of wrap up, because we're in our final little bit of time together, I do want to talk about resetting our game. Because the great part about this is once you create it, you could go and play this game with someone else. Obviously, you can't play this exact game with the same person because the ships are already in their spots and located, but you could go play it with someone else. So what do you do to reset your game? 
So all you're simply going to do is you'll come in and I normally just again, just like I keep doing over and over, select all of my cells in my ocean. And then I'm just gonna click the delete or backspace button on my keyboard. And look, all of the X's are now gone and, the, and everything goes back to blue. The only thing you may will also have to do is any cells you have selected in your key, you'll just have to reset those to no color and then your game is ready to play again with someone new, okay? You could also re change and move your ships around if you wanted to. You would just have to go back a couple of steps. So the easiest thing that I recommend doing if you wanted to be able to like move your ships around, okay, is the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna go into your conditional formatting Okay, and you're going to look for, excuse me, don't forget, you have to select within your ocean. I made that, I just made that mistake. Select within your ocean, and you're gonna go into your conditional formatting, and you're gonna find your rules, and you have to go into an area where you have your rules set. See how I selected, and my rule appears. I can remove this rule for all of them, so now no conditional formatting exists. So then I would simply just come back a couple of steps, reset my ships by selecting them, turning them gray, just like we did, and repeat all of those steps over again. So you can recreate this and move your ships around as many times as you, you would like by just simply removing that conditional formatting and then starting all over again. So those are some options to kind of play and reset and replay your game. So you can use this over and over and have a lot of fun with different sea battles inside of Google Sheets. So now that we've kind of done this in Google Sheets, I would also love to hear if now that you've seen this, do you have any other games or ideas um, of how to use this inside of Google Sheets, like any other games you could think to play? Um, I would love to hear any of your thoughts or ideas on different games that you could play by using things like conditional formatting in Sheets, right? Like what other games kind of come to your mind that could be fun to do and create inside of Google Sheets? Any ideas? I'll mention while people are typing things in, yeah. uh, Megan asked about not being able to type in an X because it was view only. And you are right. You have to actually call out to the person yes. who owns the sheet what you want them to mark, and they have to mark it for you. So that's a really good idea. And uh, yes. there was also Jake mentioning three-player battleship. That sounds like a, an amazing idea. Uh, be creative with that. You probably could get it to work, but it's going to take some thought. <laughs> so have fun. Absolutely. That is a, those are great ideas. Yes. Thank you so very much. Three player, have fun, get creative. Um, and that's the great part about this is it's completely customizable, whether it just be changing up the color, uh, using different things, or even playing some different games. So here's some games that I came up with. You could do bingo. Uh, you could make a word search so that when they type in the correct letter, it turns something maybe like green, like yes. And if it's the wrong letter, it turns red. You know, you could do something like that. You could do a crossword puzzle. Uh, so lots of fun ideas. And if you have any others, we would love to hear them. We also can take any questions you have. Um, and just happy that you guys were able to join us. I hope this was fun. I hope you were able to kind of get creative with us. And uh, let us know if you have any questions or any other fun game ideas. I'm always looking for fun new ways to play games and sheets because it's my favorite thing to do. There's a lot of shout outs on Tic-Tac-Toe as well as Connect Four. Those are fun games. Snakes oh, and Ladders sounds like a, it's gonna take some, <laughs> a lot of conditional formatting before you can set that board up. Um, but we also have a very creative activity that's on like pixel art. So like same thing, if, if you typed in the correct letter or the correct number, then it will col uh, color the cell a certain way and then it will show up a certain uh, picture. I think I've seen that as well. Those are all conditional formatting. So now that you know mm -hmm. how to do that, you can feel free to design and create your own board games. I love that. I love that. And just remember, and when you do your conditional formatting, select your cells, go to format, and then use conditional formatting. And feel free to explore what conditional formatting does, because I just showed you how when you type in something, it can change the color. 
um, based on a letter, but it also can do that with numbers. It can do that with a variety of things. So check it out, try some different things, some different options and see what happens because conditional formatting is a very powerful tool, really, really amazing option inside of Google Sheets. The hangman that suggested also sounds like a very good idea for a conditional formatting game. Thank you, Ooh, Mr. Nice. Morse class. Oh, I love that idea. That's super fun. If they get it right, it, it doesn't build the hangman. If they get it wrong, the hangman can kind of just start maybe appearing or things like that. That's a great idea. I love it. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Hope that this was helpful and gave you some ideas. And for those of teachers who are joining us, don't forget, we found all of these resources inside of Applied Digital Skills. So if you go there and type in C Battle, you will see all of these resources, including step-by-steps that you can share with your students again as needed, or you can simply just pause this video right now, rewind and go back and repeat any steps that you need along the way. But we appreciate so much for all of you joining with us and connecting with us. And we hope that it was helpful and we hope you had some fun because waging a sea battle in Google Sheets is just plain fun. I love to do it. I'm gonna go share my spreadsheet with my friend right now. And I think I'm, we're gonna go play around and see if she can find all of my ships. So I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and let us know, we are here. If you wanna ask some questions, we are here to help, but just thank you all so very, very much. And thank you to our wonderful um, friends joining us, our, my um, co-presenter Isabella, our wonderful uh, friends from Google who are joining us, really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for everybody joining us. We know that it was really fast, but once you get the hang of it, everything will be very straightforward and as, We've mentioned before, you can always pause and rewind this video. And here joining us, we also have Seth and Elmi. I'm sure a lot of the students have a lot of questions on what it feels like to work at Google. So we're very excited to have you. And thank you so much for joining us today. It is quite fun and thank you. Yeah. Have a thank wonderful you. day. <laughs> All right, awesome. Do we have any last minute questions or anything trickling in? I know we're, you know, we're wrapping up. I just want to make sure that no one has asked any questions or anything that we can help with um, as we wrap up in our final just minute or so left together. Um, we, so there is this reset function. Um, if you don't mind going over that, like yeah. how do you fix? Yeah, how do you go back yep. and rewind before? Yeah, we've got a new game. Absolutely. So I'm going to go back a little bit, a couple of steps here to kind of put my game back together. There we go. So say I am in the middle of my game here, right? And I maybe have X's all over my board, right? So I want to reset my game because maybe I want to play this again, but with someone else. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my whole ocean, all of the cells in my ocean. And so I'm just gonna select the first one right here and then I'm gonna use my shift key and select all of my columns and rows. Then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click delete or backspace on my keyboard and it clears all of those X's. So now my game is ready and reset. But remember those simple steps just reset it but your ships are in the same place. So if you're gonna replay this game, you're going to wanna replay it with someone else. Okay, so obviously your ships haven't moved, so you can't replay it with the person you just did, but you could move on and play this, the same placement with someone else. But if you wanted to take it a step farther and you wanted to reset your ships, you first need to select a cell where you know that you have your ships placed. And I know I one of my ships is in this A4 area. And then I'm gonna go up to format and I'm gonna open my conditional formatting to see it right here. So see how this one, and it, when I hover over it, it shows you where those cells are selected. If I wanted to replace or move my ships, I'm simply gonna get rid of this conditional formatting and delete it altogether. So then I would come, now I would have to come back and repeat my steps of placing my ships and following those steps, kind of going those steps back, putting in my gray ships, 
Once I did all of my gray ships, then remember we'd have to go back and select those gray ships again. And then you go format, conditional formatting, and you add that rule again. So that's a way you can completely reset your game, put your ships in different places and locations. So hopefully that was a helpful quick reminder. Thank you again so much for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. Pause this, rewind it, rewatch as needed, but thank you all so very much. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you all. Bye.